All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Samantha Mirabal. I'm with Melka's application team here to do our design shop talk today to see what questions you might have. If you have questions while we're live, please feel free to type them in on the comments. Um, we're live on both Facebook and YouTube, so you can just type them in on the chat there. Um, don't send them privately. I do not see those until after the fact. Um, I'm here by myself, so the only thing I can monitor are the live chats. Um, so if you can type them in, I'll see what we can get covered. I only have a few questions that were sent in ahead of time, so we'll start with those. And um, if you have any, it's if I just go on the questions I have, this is going to be short. So type them in soon, so I'll see them. All right, let me check both platforms. YouTube is up. Good morning, Gabby. Thanks for joining today. All right, so there's Facebook and there's YouTube. So we are good to go. Tucson. Very nice. I'm down in Central Florida. All right, let's see what we have. Can you align an objects to align a shape? Uh, align, yes, shape, kind of. Um, so let's see, let's do it. So I'm gonna make a new file. I'm gonna draw a shape using a vector tool. So I'm gonna start with a line. So if I have a line, and then now I've got digitized things, so do that. Let's do some text. Uh, let's do another shape. Oops, that wasn't a very good circle. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, so I got a circle. Why don't I grab one of the stars? Because I like them and they're a bunch of pieces so we can do, learn a few other things. Yeah, make them other colors. All right, so I got a bunch of stuff here. So let's say I want to align it in a line. So first thing that we have to deal with are anything that we want to stay together as a group. Because if I just did an alignment right now and told all this stuff to center, well, it centered it all right, but it kind of destroyed my um, star. So the first thing we have to do is to take the item that you want to group together, select it all and tell it to group. So right here is group. So select everything, or I can click over here on that color you know, click on the um, project view over here. I can draw a full box. Um, doesn't matter, it's all the same deal. And right here in this, above the project view, you'll see this group icon. So what that does is now, if I click it, it's gonna stay together as a unit, rather than before that, if I ungroup it, so let me ungroup it, which is this button. Now when I click, it's selecting each element individually and not treating it as a full complete digitized item. So I'm going to select it all and group it again. Okay, so now that's one thing. So now, different ways we can deal with alignment. So if I want it all centered, well first off you got to select everything and then tell it to center it. If you want it evenly spaced, you got that tool right here, evenly spaced. Now what if you want that all lined up on this line down here rather than floating in the air? Well I can select that along with the line, and I held the control key down, or you can draw a box. Um, that's still a vector, so I have to hold the control to select it, and I can say, okay, align to bottom. Or I can tell it to align to center, and it's now all lined up on the line. So you have a bunch of different alignment options when it's aligned like this. Now what happens if it's a curve? Okay, so a curve's a little bit different, because if I tell all these to align to bottom, it lines it all at the fulcrum, you know, right at the quadrant right here. So then you're stuck with doing one of these, moving it up and centering it on the line, which, you know, isn't doesn't take overly long. But let's say, oh, let's say I want the stars all along a circle. All right, so. Uh, let me undo this a little, or zoom out a little bit and do it a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to draw a circle as a line, a vector line. Left click, left click, hold the shift key to lock it to perfect. And I want this centered in the hoop. So I got other crap going here. So there, now it's centered in the hoop. So I can take this star and now move it over here. All right, so how can I get this to rotate along here and stay consistent? You got, I can think of a bunch of different ways to do this. So I'm just gonna show you a handful of them to give you different ideas of what, what you got. So I can take, this is 
one technique. And like I said, I literally whatever you can imagine is a way it can be done. All right. So all I did is I drew a line and centered it on there. So why? Now I can take this, copy, paste, and I can rotate it. Down here you see there's a W and an H. If I click in that, I can rotate it by number. So let's say I want it to do 45 degrees. Okay, so now I've got a 45 degree angle. I can copy, paste, and mirror that. So then I can take that same horizontal line, copy, paste, and then just flip it 90. So real quick, what did I just do? Now I've got points that I can reference where it intersects each of these. Okay, so now I've got something to make sure it's evenly spaced, so I can take my star, which is grouped, remember, copy, paste, center it there, and again, each time you paste it, it's going to break the grouping. So if you want it to stay grouped, copy, paste, move it, and then group it. Oh, well here, let's do them copy, paste, mirror, hold my alternate key down, and move. Did those two quick. Let's do these. Copy, paste, mirror, hold my alternate key down, and move. Okay, so I've got evenly spaced stars around a circle. All right, that's one way we could do that. Um, I'm going to delete all these, and let's try a different way. All right, well, here's another fun trick. Oops. I'm going to leave my lines just because. Um, when you click on this grouped item, you see how there's a box around it with filled in squares. All right, that means I can scale it. If I click on that box again, see how they're hollow now? That's rotation mode. So if I zoom in, you see that it's a circle with an X. That is the center of where it's going to rotate. So if I move that to my center of my circle right there, that's now where it's going to rotate. So now see it's rotating along my circle. So why is that relevant? Well, I can now rotate that guy around and keep it directly on my circle all the way. So if I copy and paste, move that rotation point to the center, I can make it stay on my curve. Okay, so that's another way. So I could just copy paste, move this, the center and move it around. All right, so what was the question now that I've showed lots of random stuff? Let me go back and make sure I answered it before I move along. Um, curve line, I want to align. So you still have to do it manually, but there are tricks to help you line it up when you're doing it on a curve. You've got lots of tools for straight lines, um, but on the curve, you've got to either use that rotation tool to make sure it stays on your curve um, or move it along and have lines and points to reference. Okay. We have some typed in. So before I jump on, if I use a bank fill, I don't know what a bank fill is on face. Do I keep settings on? If I do, if I'm, I'm going to read this differently. So I, cause I don't understand if I use a bank fill on fleece, do I keep settings on letters? So, uh, can you rephrase that? Are you asking if you're doing letters on fleece, do you need to do anything to the letters to make them so outright? Um, so if you're doing them as a flat fill, maybe, maybe that's the question. So here, if I go into the properties on this, oh, I don't want to print. I'm sorry. I want to change this to a flat fill. So if you're doing flat fill on fleece, do you keep the settings on the letters? Well, yeah, it's really, you'd still want to make sure you have underlay. You still want to make sure you've got some form of pull compensation. Depending on the fleece, if it's really fluffy and it's going to eat your fabric, you might want to do a primer stitch. Um, that's not really necessary unless you've got a really fluffy material. Um, so I'm backfill. I, I still don't understand what a backfill is. Are you talking about the primer? So are you talking about this if you're doing a primer stitch? If you're talking about that, if I use a backfill, I, I guess what I don't understand is what you mean by backfill. That's not a term I'm familiar with. 
So there's the primer stitch, maybe that. Let me know. If you've got a visual example, that'll work too. Um, okay, I'm waiting to see if any, if I get any clarification on that question real quick before I, all right, I'll pop back to it. Um, what else do we have? Good morning, Lorena. All right, so if I'm making a patch, are the fat, faux marrow shapes good to make the borders? Yeah, they're cool. Um, and am I able to make it a satin finish? Yeah, you can do either. Um, I use the satin finish a lot when I'm making patches. So let's say I'm going to move my star. So let's say I want this circle to be a patch. Um, if you, I'm going to convert, make that a satin stitch by holding shift and then this guy right here, the single line center. I'm going to make the width closer to 40 because 10 points is not a sat, not a nice satin stitch anyway. Um, four patches. So yeah, you can do 40 roughly and that satin, the only thing you might want to do is, okay, is to check on the density. 4.0 might be a little bit, depending on what material you're sewing on, you might need a little bit lower density to get coverage on the edges. So um, that's really all I would do if you're doing a satin stitch is use your satin, make sure the width is wide enough to cover your materials and then maybe lower the density. You know, 3.5 to 3.7, somewhere in there might be good. So you said yes, that. So you're talking about this primer stitch. So what was the original question? Do I keep the settings on the letters? All right, so yes. If you're using a, a primer stitch like this, how do you deal with these letters? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yes, you still are going to want to have some amount of underlay. Now, do you need a ton of underlay? No, because think of this, that fill is an underlay, but you still want something. So if you're unsure, you can always use the um, auto for an underlay. So set it to auto and make sure you have your tie in and tie outs. So yeah, you still want to have some amount of underlay that's going to make sure the stitches stay on top of that primer stitch and they don't sink in. Um, you don't want to just go straight into the letters. You want to give it some amount, even if it's, even if all you do is a center walk, that's better than nothing. I would recommend at least an edge walk. Uh, and don't worry about not knowing the terminology. Um, so yeah, this, what we call this is a primer stitch. There's a trademark term a lot of people refer to. Um, I'm, I try to avoid using that cause it is trademarked. <laughs> so, um, Basically, it's a global underlay. It's a open um, fill that you put behind whatever you're sewing to hold the, the nap down so that when you sew on top of it, you don't have the fibers trying to eat your design, right? Uh, the easiest way I can think of illustrating that of why you would use it is think about a stocking cap that has all that fur. You can put a name on there and then pull off your topper and next thing you know, you can't see your name anymore because the fur just kind of shrinks around your embroidery so this by doing an underlay like this that matches the fabric color it holds it all down so that you'll be able to see whatever you embroider on there okay um am i more on that patch question am i able to make a satin finish yes what's the bath best backing um depends on how you're making the patches right so if you're going to cut them out and use a burner if you will a soldering iron a wood iron um, a wood burner something like that to to heat to burn the edges then use some sort i wouldn't use tearaway i was i would use a cutaway because it's a polyester it's a synthetic material let me rephrase that it's a synthetic material that will melt with that hot heat all right um it, adhesive to make it an iron-on patch there are several that madeira makes um, they make a thin one and a thick one uh, I forget the mills. It's like a two mil or a one mil and a three mil or a one mil and a six mil, two mil and six. I don't remember. Um, but if you look on there, it's a specialty backing. Theirs work really well as a heat seal on the back and it makes it an iron on patch. Basically what you do is you iron it onto the back and then pull off, cut off the excess. And now you've got an iron on patch. I like the thicker materials better. Um, that's a personal preference. They seem to hold up I like how they hold up better when I heat press them onto a garment. Um, the thinner ones, you know, it's 
seem to not last as long. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see what other questions were typed in. Uh, can you embroider on low prof profile caps? Yes, you can. Um, and it depends on the design, absolutely. So when you're looking at caps, let me see if I have that picture in my presentation. Sometimes I store pictures and stuff. Yeah, I do, haha, <laughs> there we go. I have random stuff I've just kind of shoved to the back of my presentation, so I have them as reference. Um, when you're looking at hats, one of the things to look at is, you know, usable space for the design. And how I always look at it is where the, it starts to do its aggressive turn. So that's what this X is marking. That's kind of the max that you would have. Now, what I always consider safe for the hat, if you measure that distance, subtract an inch, half an inch from the top, half an inch from the bottom, because you want to be at least half an inch away from the brim, and you don't really want to be on that curve, so half an inch down. And that will give you a safe max height for that hat. There are some hats with, that are, you know, trucker style. They're crazy tall, so you can put really big designs on there safely because the curve starts way up here. All right, that's, ex that's excessive, but you get the idea. So this distance of how far it goes up straight before it starts turning is really tall. On the lower profile hats, this starts shrinking, right? So yes, you can absolutely sew on low, lower profile, but I tend to grab and measure each hat individually to decide what my maximum design height is for that hat. And this is how I do it. It's, I literally look from the brim to where it starts to curve aggressively, and then I subtract an inch, and that's what I call max. You know, your safe sewing field. Um, yeah. Okay. That's how I do it. All right. Any other questions typed in? Uh, how do you split, separate, or separate text or a logo in half? So that was also... Um, typed in. So splitting text in half. So ooh, let's not do that. Um, I don't know. Do you actually, what are you trying to do? Turn it into two designs or just split it so it's one design and it sews in two different colors or center out? So it kind of depends on what you're looking at doing. So if I want to take just text and I want it to sew center out, let's say, I can go into the properties here and I can tell it center out. If I want to give it two colors, I can even come over here and select each letter holding the control key down. Those X's is what I'm what I'm clicking on. And I can give it another color. So it'll so center out, it'll have the two separate colors. Now if what you're wanting to do is now take this and have it do split as one file and text as another. Um, how I do it is I just copy paste. <laughs> and so now there's two on top of each other. I go into properties, delete that, and then line it up to this design, left align. There we go. And then I'm going to copy and paste this one more time just to give me reference art. And go in here, delete that, take this and that, and this time I'm going to write a line. Oh my gosh, why? All right, so now I'm just going to delete that because now I've got it sewing the full line of text and then both lines here, and we don't want that. I'm going to select that and hit delete. There we go. Uh-oh, I have company. All right. So you can do that. Splitting logos becomes more complex. So you really have to digitize it to be in two separate pieces. Um, so that's one thing. It, you can't just draw a line and say, hey, now this is one file, that's another. You really have to think about it and plan out your sewing. All right, let's see what else do we have. Okay, split it into two separate colors. Okay, so I showed you that. Oh yeah, so just to do it again, Ooh, let me show you a trick. Hey get, guys, can you close that door? Sorry, this. can you close this door here, Kathy? Kathy, uh, oh well, 
I got company that arrived while I'm live. I'm by myself, so. All right, so I'm gonna take, let me show you a trick. If I go text and I start typing. Can you close that door? All right, so I've got Samantha. If I hold the control key down and hit enter, that's now another line. If I click on color, another color before I start typing, and I don't even have to hit control. Let's say I want the next word to be another color. Um, or I can do every letter. Red. A. I'm thinking too hard here, sorry. And B, so this is a bad rainbow, can you tell? So I can keep on clicking and each one will be a separate color. Okay, well, what about that? Now, let's say you dislike the colors you selected and you wanted those all to be one. Well, I can hold my control key down and click on those X's and now give them a different color. Okay, so yeah, there's you can do it as you're typing the text or modify it after the fact, however you want to do it. All right, what else do we have? Can you remind me how to vector an image quickly to get an idea of uh, how it might look in stitches? Okay, so I assume what you're actually asking is, hey, you've got some art, so let me go open some art. And I keep on opening this because it's a vector. I assume you have vector design. All right, and you want to see what this is going to look like as um, thread. All right, well, I can select that and I can just do it crazy quick by clicking on convert. Poof, I have some stitches. So that'll give you an idea really fast. Okay, what other questions? I'm working on Tackle Twill with the four inch Greek Tackle Twill. How do I export a cut file? Okay, so let's look at that. It's an older font, so well, I don't think it works like some of the newer ones, but I can show you how to do it regardless. All right, so Let's do a new file. I was testing it beforehand. Uh, I'm going to type an A and I'm going to go make that the four inch Greek tackle twill. I want that. Where's my. Is that a D? I like the triangle. It doesn't really matter, but I wanted the triangle. <laughs> okay, so I've got this design up here. And you can see if I redraw it, you'll see it's got the three colored. There's my placement stitch. That's the tack down. And then we've got our cover stitch going around and the rest of the design. Okay, so you want that first color, that first um, stitch is what you want to export to your software. So what I recommend doing with this is set up your design and get all your settings and get this right. Once you're happy with it, then come over here to lettering, go operations, and then convert to wireframe. What does that do? It takes it out of lettering and now it makes it each just digitized elements. So I can now take this first color, do a control C, go to a new file, do a control V, and then I can file save as and save it as an SVG or whatever format your software requires. I don't understand why this time to focus stuff keeps popping up. Okay, so that's what you do. You just save it off as an SVG. You can go open it up um, in your software and cut out. You're good to go. So that's how I recommend doing it. And that way you don't get all the other layers that you don't need. Okay, what other questions were sent in? Um, yes, there is an easier way. Also, is there a way to sew out the placement first to allow... Yeah, so... Um, Oh, all at the same time, you'd have to rearrange everything. Okay, so I think what you're asking there is I've oops, I've got a design that is multiple things in this font. So let's go four inch Greek tackle, A, B, C, there we go. So what you're asking is, can I make it so it does all these placement stitches at once? Yes, you can, How and however, be careful with that kind of thing. Um, remember, depending on how large your design is, embroidery tends to shift. So 
it narrows things up, the fabrics move a little bit. So it's always going to be better for you to finish as you go. So it would be better for you to do the A completely, then the B completely, then the C completely, and not to put all the fabric down and then sew it. But if you know for a fact you're not doing it so big, it's not going to move around, you're good to go, cool. Um, there are those cases. So operations, convert to wireframe, because that pulls it out of it. So now I can select by using my control key, select those three, drag them up together. Let's just do the, these two, because there we go. So now those are all combined, and I can merge those into one color. So there's all my placements. So when I go to sew this, I would sew that, lay all my fabrics down, and when I convert it, I dropped a stitch, but that's all right. Okay, and then you do the rest of them there. All right, what else do we have? How do you align to the collar of a neck for embroidering at the neckline? So I think I talked about that last week as well. Um, when you're doing those sorts of things, I always tend to take my camera or you got to know what the curve is, right? And as far as doing the actual alignment, this is where you got to kind of think of, you know, put on your thinking cap. So let's say you digitized it and you knew this was the curve, right? Well, you got to pick two points. Oops, undo. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to move the whole thing. All right. You got to pick two points that you know on the item that you can use as alignments. Because if I, let's say I know this point is, I can, or I can mark it. Let's say I can mark four inches up and seven inches over or whatever it is and mark these two points on there. When you set up your design, make sure those two points are centered relative to this line right here. What does that allow you to do? Well, now you, when you set it, hoop it, go to your machine, you navigate to this point on your shirt that you either marked or measured or have a reference point on it. Laser left, come over here laser left, laser bullseye, that rotates and centers the design right there. So then down here is all your stuff you're gonna embroider. It would now align to your shirt collar. Okay, so it takes a little bit of thinking of how you set it up, but it's pretty easy to do once you kind of understand what the alignment's doing. So in your manual, there is this little chart which shows all the different alignment commands. I really don't recommend you doing them all. <laughs> um, if you want to learn to, I recommend learning these two. Laser left, laser right, laser bullseye, which is a left justify, or this one right here, which is laser left, laser left, laser bullseye, which rotates and centers it along between the two points that you selected. So those would be the two I'd recommend you get masterful with before you start messing with all this. <laughs> okay. Um, goodness, I do this probably... 50 times a day. <laughs> all right. What other questions do we have? Because those are all the ones, I believe. Let me go back and look. Yeah, we talked about that. Cool. Yeah, those are all the ones I had sent in ahead of time. We did get you a link in the comments for um, laser alignment, so be sure to check those out. Any other ones before we call it a day? Let me go back through my comments and make sure I didn't miss something. We talked about the patches. We talked about the primer stitch. Um, Lorena pointed out that the primer is really good for towels too. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Anything that you've got nap, whether it be a stocking, a towel, um, furs, you know, something where the texture is going to lean over your embroidery, that's what a good case for that primer stitch would be. Um, we talked about changing the letters, colors in text. Oh, we have a few more that were typed in. Uh, okay. Is it possible to modify and save later letters in an alphabet and save for future use, perhaps? Uh, example, E-A, that closes in on small letter. Yeah, you can modify it. Yeah, so, all right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking out loud. Is it possible to modify and save letters in, letters in an alphabet and save for future use? Um, so you can take the entire font and duplicate it and then modify it to your heart's content and um, name it something else. So, and for instance, C drive, 
Where are they? Program files, Melco, Design Shop, wherever you have it installed, um, alphabets. These are the alphabets that are the OFA files. Okay, so you can take, let's say you want the Bafo or whatever. You can copy that one, rename it, you know, paste it as a new name of what you want, and then go into the alphabet editor and we'll get you a link on the alphabet editor and modify it. So I think I already have a one over here that I did this to. So I'm going to go to the alphabet editor. And yeah, so I've got this test one. So you could come down to whatever letter it is you want to modify. So you suggested the E. And I can come over here and modify it to my heart's content. And it's a new font, right? So I can go change this shape altogether and make it something silly or open up this hole more or whatever it is you want to do. So yeah, you absolutely can do that. Um, but it's, I think we'll get you a link to the alphabet editor so you can look at that. Um, okay, so next question, JC Productions. How often does the software get updated? Um, and how often do you guys work with Hitch software or any embroidery add-on? What is Hitch? Is that, I don't know what Hitch is, I'm sorry. Hitch software, I'm Googling. Yeah, I don't know what Hitch is, so I can't answer that. <laughs> uh, or any other embroidery add-on. I know there are other, there's an add-on that we're working on that's associated with um, the color reel. So they're doing that. That's pretty cool. Um, how often does it get updated? Uh, they, they're routinely doing improvements and bug fixes and stuff. I... Um, how often that those are actually released. I don't know the formal schedule. I don't have insight into that. I want to say quarterly, um, but I'm not sure that's accurate. So um, I would have to get back to you on that one. Um, as far as embroidery add-ons, if there's one you're particularly interested in, shoot it over to applications at melco.com and they're always, you know, excited to look at new things. So definitely send that over. Uh... Do I know when Design Chops can be available on any iPad or touch devices? Um, thank you. And it's only Windows. Could you modify it to work on a Mac as well? So I have no idea about iPod or iPad. I know it works with touch monitors, so there's that. Um, as far as working on Macs, I, you can use it on a Mac. You just got to use Boot Camp, I believe. There's a video that I think Mike Doe did that talks about using um, these things on a Windows machine or on a Mac machine. So we'll have to look for those videos for you. Um, but I have no idea about iPad. I don't know. I know most of the time, most of these softwares are all only Windows based and it's just how they are. But I don't know. Oh, Hatch Embroidery? Hatch is a completely different software. So um, yeah, I don't know. Still trying to understand the question. I'm sorry. Do how often we work with Hatch? We don't. Well, we're they're kind of a competitor, right? So, and we did get you the link on Melco Software on Apple Mac, so we got that for you as well. Okay. What other questions do you guys have? Yeah. Hatch is a competitor's product. Okay, I don't see any other ones typed in. Okay, I think that was it, unless anyone else. Uh,
All right, on the other question about lettering, can you split it into two colors? The letter itself. Oh, well, yeah, you can. You gotta convert to wireframe. Okay, so let's get out of this. Say no. Um, where is my lettering? Not that. I got too much stuff open. All right, we're gonna redo it. I'm just gonna make a new file and open more things. All right. So if I wanna split this into two colors, you gotta decide how you wanna split it. So I usually do that using vector lines. Let's say I wanna split it across there. All right, so, and why don't, this is pretty big, so I'm gonna change that to a flat fill first. Operations, convert to wireframe. And now that it's in a wireframe, I can add a point there, add a point there, select those two points using the control key, and then split element at selected point. And now I've got my text in different colors. So yeah, you can do that. So yeah. Um, I'm doing a hat. It's a brand for a farmer. There's not an option. There is not an option to do bottom up. Why not? It's, you just have to digitize the design to be bottom up. So basically you want to go as much as you can bottom up and center out. There's always going to be way, reasons you can't go strictly straight from the bottom based on its design, but the closest you can be to the bottom and up, the less you're pushing down towards the brim, the better you'll be. And the same with doing center out. Sometimes you can't do a true center out, but the more, the closer you can digitize the design to be center out, the better off you'll be. Okay. Um, what other questions do we have? Any? All right. Well, I think the only thing I don't really have good answers for is on integration with other products. I don't know anything about that. I'm sorry. But I think we're good. I think that's everything I was typed in. Okay. Yeah, with these, another way we can split them, just before I forget, is I can take, I can draw whatever shape you want it split across. <laughs> so you can also use, draw different shapes like that to help you find different points to split. And then if I use this insert splice, I can draw a splice line there, splice line there, splice line there. I'm gonna, I'd move it around, of course, to put it where I actually wanted it. There we go. And now watch this. I can take this whole thing, say operations, break object. And now it broke the, all those pieces across those splice lines that I put. So now I've got it in a whole bunch of colors. Okay. All right. Well, I think that's it for today. Um, feel free to let us know what you want to learn about, and we'll try to get you some answers. All right, you guys have a fantastic weekend. Uh, there is normally an option in V11 for bottom-up. That's only available in text. So the bottom-up thing is only a text thing. So if I come over here and type in text, uh, you need multiple lines of text. So if I have multiple lines of text, I can come over here and tell it to go bottom up, which is this one, and center out. Those two settings are only something that is an option in text. If you're doing a logo, you're going to have to digitize it yourself to be bottom up and center out. There's no poof, click, and like there is with text. Does that help, Curtis? So now this, the bot, it's going to start down here. It's going to end up there. So it's going to go bottom to top and center out. But that those two buttons are only available on, in text. All right. Perfect. Well, you guys have a fantastic weekend. I will talk to you next week. And see what we can do then. Have a fantastic week. Bye, y'all.